Hi everyone, welcome to Gaudi MD. In this video, I'll be discussing frequently asked questions. So question number one that I always get is, um, how did you study for step one? What materials did you use? Um, you know, what study schedule did you use? All of that. So I have made a very, very detailed video on this. Um, I've actually made a video in three different parts because it's so long about exactly what materials I used for step one and how I use them. Um, if you want to take a look at that video, please click here on the link above um that'll take you straight to the video remember it's in three parts you know take your time <laughs> watching it so i really had a lot to share with you guys and i hope that you find it useful question number two that i always get is how did you study for step two of course step two is broken up into two parts so there's step two cs and step two ck um, i have made a detailed video on how i studied for step two cs and my entire exam experience um, so you can take a look at that at, in this link. I won't, you know, repeat all of that information here. Step 2 CK I have yet to make a video of and I will definitely make one of my videos for that. But um, just in a nutshell for Step 2 CK, um, it's one of the easier ones because, I mean, it seems more difficult because there are just not as many resources to study for Step 2 CK as there were for Step 1. Um, but I think that that makes it a little easier. You can focus in a bit more. The only thing with Step 2 CK is that the resources aren't the best. I mean, for f Step 1, First Aid was excellent, right? It was the only book you really needed. You can always add other resources like Kaplan and Pathoma and whatever, but really, First Aid was excellent. And for Step 2 CK, that's not the case. I ended up looking at Master the Boards and I looked at First Aid for Step 2 CK. Um, neither book is like First Aid for Step 1. The information is not as succinct um, in the books, but I did like Master, Master the Boards better. Um, I felt like sometimes First Aid had some information that was missing in Master the Boards, but I'm not really sure it was that high yield. So um, I think Master the Boards was an excellent resource. I used uh, Dr. Pastana's surgery notes, which was a very quick read and very good. And of course, the main thing for Step 2 CK is UWorld. Um, that is the main resource you have to use, so that is what I used. All right, the third question I get, you guessed it, it's about Step 3. Um, I have not taken Step 3 yet. We have been discussing it on my residence group. <laughs> We haven't started residency yet, but we have a WhatsApp group. And um, we have been discussing, like, when are we supposed to be taking this exam? Has anyone started studying yet? So I know, like, as an IMG, I um, can take this exam very early. I can start studying for it now. I can take it, and I am planning to. If anyone has any advice for me, I would be grateful. <laughs> but um, as soon as I do tackle um, the last USM Lee monster, I will uh, let you guys know um, how I did and my, you know my honest experience with it. Okay, the fourth question I always get, and this is from uh, mainly obviously IMGs, is when should I take the USM Lee Step One? So for my college, um, we had four and a half plus one year of internship. So I had a five and a half year long course where I was considered a medical student. And in my college, um, internship was a little bit more lenient in the sense that they let us take um, breaks as long as we made up for it. So like they would give us an extension. But what I would have done um, now that I know what I know is that I would have completed my internship up till about a month. I would have kept a month at the end of my internship to come back, like just one rotation or whatever it is that you have. I would have kept it till the end and then I would have taken like a break. So from the beginning, when internship starts, I would have applied to all the clerkship programs. I might have used like med clerkships or Chicago clerkships or Ameri clerkships or some company to get me a clerkship without my step one score. I would have um, done the clerkship then like at the end of my internship. So because I have one month of internship left, I'm still considered a student. Are you following me? So I haven't finished my internship and I took a break right 
before I finished it. I left one month, right? So I'm still a student in the eyes of everyone because I don't have my degree yet, right? So when I'm applying for clerkships, I'm still a student. I took an extension in my internship of whatever, however many months I'm missing, which would be, you know, in between. So I would take that extension and I would go and do clerkships. I also, uh, what I did in my case and what I do if, you know, I had to do it again, I would take some time off to study for step one. So basically, my answer to your question of when you should take USMLE step one is sometime after um, MBBS, so sometime during your internship, okay? Not, not after you get your degree, but after, you know, you finish final year, you have a little bit more time because MBBS in India, you don't have time to study for the USMLE. The exam structure is completely different. So I tried to study side by side. I always went through my first aid a little bit um, in first year and second year because I knew, you know, I wanted to give the USMLE. Um, so for those of you who know you want to give the USMLE and you're in your first or second year of MBBS, so you can definitely um, start looking at your first aid. And, if, and just in case, you know, your lectures aren't good, in MBBS in case you know your college for certain subjects maybe physiology is taught really poorly in your college um, Kaplan can help you with that okay and the fifth question that I get um, that is very very frequently asked as well um, I get very detailed long questions and emails asking you know what do I do about clerkships what do I do about US clinical experience and what do I do about research and extracurricular activities so I have definitely talked about um, a lot of this in that um, USCE video that I made. Basically, um, a lot of people are wondering how important all of this is. So I would say that it's very important to have US clinical experience, um, especially if you do not have a US citizenship or a green card. If you are a visa holder, I think it is very important important for you to get your uh, USCE out of the way. You should look at um, the program requirements. Um, usually programs list that they want at least three months of USCE for at least for internal med programs. It was like that. I don't want to go into a lot of detail on that because I have uh, talked about it in the previous video on USCE. So please check that out. Um, but as far as research goes, um, someone asked me actually on my website, Okay, so I'm going to read out Ruchi's comment on my website. So she says very nice things to me. And then she says that her question is, how many case reports, abstracts, presentations, and research do you think one should have for specialties like internal medicine, uh, obs gynae, and family medicine? And I know it's different for different specialties, but how many do you think would, be, would make one safe? Very good question, and it was something that really uh, bothered me <laughs> all through college. I tried to get as many uh, research papers published as I could, um, but in the end, it's very, very difficult when you're studying and you have to do research at the same time, and sometimes you just don't have the infrastructure um, in your college that allows for that. So here's the thing. Um, at least for internal medicine, research is important, but it's not as important as your step one scores, your USCE, your year of graduation, and how well your interview goes. Oh, and also your letter of recommendations and your personal statement. So all of these things I think are way more important. Have something, have some publications, have one or two. But I mean, unless you're trying to get into um, like Mayo or John Hopkins or you know a university hospital that really prizes research if you're trying to get into one of those then it makes sense to do a lot more research you should be published in international journals you should you know be at the top of your game in the research field if you are okay with the community programs or you want something that's community affiliated um, in internal medicine then Really what is more important in those areas is how your interview goes, what your um, personal statement says, you know, and of course your board scores, etc. So research, 
is not as important for community programs. And I am sure that that is 100% true for family medicine. Um, but for more competitive specialties, then what happens is you're going to get, since it's so competitive, you're going to get so many students who have the same scores, who have the same year of graduation, who have very similar resumes, and then what happens is then, like, how much research have you done? I don't think it's the number of research articles that you've published, but more the quality of the research. Is it international work, or was it just published in your college journal? Um, did you go present it? So one thing that I noticed when I was filling out the ERAS um, information for my application is when you're listing publications, I actually don't have many. I actually just have one publication. So I wrote that in and then it was like asking me about presentations and stuff. So I've done plenty of presentations. Um, if you're in India, then you might have heard of Medicon. I presented a couple of times there. You can do so many different uh, presentations in different uh, conferences. That looks really good on your resume. So I hope everyone that answers uh, what you're asking. If not, please feel free to comment on my website and send me an email. Well, thank you for all the love and the support. Um, I will be making videos more often, I promise. So please stay tuned. Um, till next time, see you later.